Jude got England over the line, but was it very good? No, it wasn't. Went well, back to fog football, just like that intro, to be fair. But you know what? I think it was good, because it confirmed in my eyes that England have got no chance of winning this tournament. Yeah, that's the only consolation you can take right now, guys. Fog football here doing an England match review. It doesn't happen very often, but Scotland are shite, so we've kind of just turned our attention to ABE, anyone but England. So tonight... We're supporting the Serbians, even though they kind of did let us down. Better performance in the second half, but let's not kid ourselves here. How many times did Serbia actually look like they were going to score? There was one decent shot from uh, Vlavovic, and then there was also a penalty claim that wasn't given. And at first, I thought, you know what, you're not going to get a penalty for that. And that is what the English commentary said. Alan Shearer said it. Um, BBC Sports said it. Everybody said it. But the more I look at it, the more I actually do think there was contact, then everyone on Twitter seems to think it was a stone waller. So we'll talk more about that later on as the game goes on. But yeah, uh, England might have won the night. They might have got the three points. But this is not a team that's going to go on and win this Euro. So that made me happy. That's cheered me up. It might have took two days into Euro 2024. But I can sleep this Sunday night knowing that it's not coming home. Yeah. It's, it's not, not coming home either. Like It's not coming home, but it's definitely not going home. No, definitely not, but I mean, Jude Bellingham does get the goal, it's a bit lucky, a bit deflect that cross in there, puts it into the back of the net, and then he was squaring up, man, to the smallest Serbian on the fucking pitch in Kostic. I, yo, I think he's an overrated, overhyped, egotistical bastard. I'm not going to say he's overrated, right, I do rate the guy, but he's, he's beginning to get a fucking ego on no, him, he, he thinks he's the fucking rock. I think every English player is pretty much overrated just by how much the media... And, and pundits talk them up. No, nah, but you know I would. Well, I agree. Name me one English player that was underrated that played for the national team since in this millennium. It, yeah. it's hard to think of one. I get that, but oh, this, no, well, name me this one. guy starts for Real Madrid. I'm asking you to name me one. That's not overrated. Uh, one that's underrated. Underrated? Fuck, I don't know, man. I mean, I probably well, right now. I'd say it's Bellingham. He's by far the best player on that pitch. You think so? Yeah. I thought Saka was the best player on the pitch tonight for England. Well, no, I'm not talking about tonight. I just mean in general. Hey, talk talk about over Harry fucking Kane. What Shite, has this guy done? Shitey pants. People were blaming Spurs for him not winning any trophies. I know Spurs are shite and they don't win trophies anyway, but maybe Harry Kane's just not got a trophy in him. But i tell you what trophy certainly... <laughs> That's not, also. He certainly doesn't have Euro 2024 in him, but the early goal came from a Saka cross, Saka cross into the box, uh, the Serbian defender slides in to get a block on it and the ball like hits underneath his like underneath his like shin and then it like bounces up it, and just lands perfectly at the edge of the six yard box where Jude Bellingham is, is rushing in. Defending I guess could have been better but I guess when you've got Jude Bellingham running in he's got pace he's got momentum um the the guy didn't really have a chance but very fortunate here for England that the cross takes a deflection and it's almost like if Saka could have pinpointed millimetre by millimetre where he wanted this ball to go, that's where he would have put it, right into the path of the oncoming Bellingham. So extremely fortunate. Was it a good header for Bellingham? I'd say it was a good run for Bellingham, but once the ball's in that, he was never going to miss and he didn't miss. So fair play to him, but lucky goal. And then Serbia were just really poor. They weren't offering much. They got poor England offering. We, well, keep, we mean, keep hearing, oh, 30 minutes of sublime, superb, brilliant football. Well, Serbia didn't really string a pass together. They couldn't keep any sort of possession. And England were just in control of the game. But it was more through what Serbia weren't doing than what England were doing. And then, I mean, I'd say from about the 30th minute, 35th minute, I think Serbia were the better team. No, I agree. I think they were. I, I just... I, I don't... I, I thought half-time originally came at the wrong time for Serbia because I thought they were beginning to, you know, get the upper hand. But nah, man, second half... I think as poorly as you can probably do it, I would say Serbia almost dominated the second half, but in a poor fashion because they really didn't really create much. But they, they had all the ball. They, they looked like the team that was going to score... England were almost holding on. Well, they were, no, they were holding on. For a 1-0 win in the opening game at, like, the half an hour mark. It's like, what are they doing? England had five shots, man, and, I mean, that, that's shite. 
Yeah, Serbia had six. If I, I could only name you, like, uh, like I said, there was the Flavovic one, and uh, there was one for me, Mila Savic or Milankovic Savic. Him, I there was I one like for guy. him. Other than that, though, not that many good chances. So we get into the second half. Right, the penalty claim. So Mitrovic, who I thought was kind of underwhelming, but to be fair, Flavovic pretty much wasted every decent Serbia attack in the in the first hour of the game. Would you not agree? No, he did. It's almost like when Mitrovic got took off, he actually started to perform a little bit better. But he was give, he was just giving the ball away. Serbia would get into good positions in the final four, and he would literally just lose the ball. Mitrovic, though. Ball is played across. He is running across into the six yard box. Trippier comes from the side, and there's like a bit of contact. He pushes him, and I don't think that's enough for a penalty. And the, the commentator says, you know, it's a good push. I don't know how a push off the ball when you're not making any attempt to play the ball. How can that be a good push? Surely that's a foul, though. If you're pushing, you know, just logically speaking, if you're pushing somebody and you're affecting where they're trying to go and it's an off the ball situation and I don't see how that there can be anything good in that but then you actually look at his leg and his leg does come across Mitrovic and not only does he make contact with his leg he also makes contact when he stamps down he's making contact on his foot so when you slow it down I think there definitely was a claim for a penalty and I think it would have been soft but we've seen a hell of a lot of soft penalty I mean we've seen a penalty being given for Ryan Porteous getting the ball we did. And I know there was some follow through, but Jesus Christ. Ah, uh, just a wee bit of a follow through though. But uh, did Trippier play the ball? Was Trippier making any intention of playing the ball? Tri all Trippier was trying to do here was prevent Mitrovic from getting the ball. He, he was not in contention. He wasn't trying to get the ball. He was trying to stop Mitrovic from getting it. And no, he, he endangered his opponent, definitely. Uh, no, but in all seriousness, I, I don't think it was much of a penalty, all right? Have you seen them giving? Oh, of course. That's enough for me then. Yeah, but say that happened against us, man. I, I, I would be raging, man. Well, I'd, be well, calling, go, I'd be calling the referee that's how, you've, that's how you've got to flip these things. If the, if the Porteous one happened against us... Yeah, but here's the deal. People keep saying, oh, you're not living in 2024 anymore. You can't get away with that. So, by that logic, can you get away with that? Uh, um, in my day, that would never have been a penalty. Uh, but it's not your day anymore, buddy. <laughs> anyway, right, England create nothing. Harry Kane hit the bar, right? Decent save, by the way. Like we said, Flavich is a shot. Linkovic Savage has yeah, a shot. Yeah, but do you not remember in the first half when Walker put a cross in? Yeah. And he fell over? They, they were The commentators were looking for a penalty? No, I hate it. No, let's talk, let's about, talk the, about the bias. No, let, yeah, let's talk about the bias, right? I get it, right? It's it's England, right? The, most of the pundits are English, apart from Fabregas, right? Blah, blah, blah. But you're supposed to put on a product that's impartial. Yes, she's all want England to win, but I, I, I just don't fucking get it, man. I, I Like, the way they're speaking, it's like the referee's giving a decision, and then the commentator's like, oh, well, Foden got all the ball. No, Declan Rice got all the ball there, but in the referee's opinion, he didn't. It's like, what the fuck on, man? It's like every time Serbia got a decision. No, no, but no, let's call it, no, let's be fucking fair though, right? See, in, see when seeing club football, see commentators and pundits, see obviously they've got their, their you know, bias and all that stuff, but it's nothing like this. See, comment, see Martin Tyler, well actually I'll say this, Martin Tyler was clearly a, he was clearly a United fan, he's one of the worst ones if you actually compare his uh, reaction to a United goal and a Liverpool goal, but see for the most part, man, it's impartial. Would you not agree? Not at international level. Not internet. Not like questioning like the referees' fucking decisions, and and that's where it goes at the windy for me. Uh, every man. time England, every time the referee gives England a free kick or gives a foul against Serbia, the commentators like ah referee good call doing his job there foul on the Englishman. But when he gives Serbia something, it's like oh referee's opinion Serbia were fouled. It's like what the fuck? Yeah, you could argue every. Call the referee makes us his opinion. It was facts when England benefited, but when Serbia... It was an opinion. I mean, yeah. Jesus Christ. And also, Alan Shearer, co-commentator. You can share that one, because he's fucking rank rotten. Yeah, he's not great. Good footballer in his day, but not a great commentator. Uh, Vlavovic had a shot for about 24 yards, tested Jordan Pickford. I'm not convinced... Did this you get was... the ruler for that one, 24? I'm not convinced this was going in. It was a decent shot, but they made it out as... First of all... I... 
I think they were making it out as if it was an amazing shot to try and put over Jordan Pickford's save. It was a decent shot, and it was a decent save. No, I, that, I that, mean, that was it. Yeah, and the, no, the one. After, it was right down the middle. It was so sensitive. The one after it, Harry Kane headed it right, and it was like it was fucking straight arm, and they're trying to make out. It was like like a goal line clearance at the last inch. Fucking, uh, we, but I'm disappointed, man, because I thought Serbia. I don't know, didn't. It's like I thought the like you said they dominated in like the shittiest fashion, but they never like had England under the cosh. I think in the last like ten minutes, they never looked like they were going to score. No, for, it one nil fucking written all over it. I mean, for all the all the times they got into good areas and they got into good positions, and all the time that they spent in the final third, the end product just was not there. No, I would say Serbia's probably. What, I mean, Serbia's probably just a wee bit worse than Denmark, but. When England come up against Germany, France, the Italians, the Spanish, I just don't see what they're going to do. The only problem for us is, they'll, based on every simulator I've seen, they're not going to come up against one of those teams until the semi-finals. Yeah. Any simulator I've seen, England... Well, it depends on the way the groups finish, no, I it, guess. No, it does, but if things go the way we're expecting them to go... England are getting a relatively easy passage. Yeah. I've, I've seen a lot of um, predictors have England versus Hungary. Yeah, but Serbia won't even that. Oh, fuck, Hungary won't be going through. But I mean, Well, maybe switch them for Switzerland then. Oh, well, I think and Switzerland in, are good. Though. And in the last 16, I've seen England against like the mediocre, like a Romania. Or a Romania. Ukraine, someone like that. Anyway, so. guys, I, I set for the match a few. I mean... <laughs> Very disappointing. I thought it was a really poor game. I almost put me to sleep. I'd, worst game in the tournament that I've seen. I and didn't, and I didn't really see Slovenia, Denmark. But. The entire build-up. Anytime, anytime the pundits spoke about Serbia, they spoke about the height, the physicality. That's going to be their key strength. Serbia, every time they got the ball out wide and you're thinking, right, cross it in. It never came in. S supposedly got all this height. All the all these physical assets didn't use them. Got a corner, end of the first half. Oh, first real opportunity to do something. You're going to whip it in, try and find someone's head. No, they 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 they, they do like a low cross. Oh, you maintain possession, back out to the wing. You're going to cross it in. No, we're going to play it backwards, and the referee's going to blow for half time. I mean, I don't get it, especially looking at English defence. I think it's shaky. I think that English defence is uh, questionable, but... Uh, it is questionable. Many questions. Did they get asked tonight? Not that many. Nope. But they did get three points, guys. And that is That's where... three points more than Scotland. We'll be back with a match review on what, Wednesday. Uh, Scotland against Switzerland. I can't say I'm confident. It's a must-not-lose for Scotland. Yeah. And that is... If we'd have lost marginally to Germany, we'd be in a position where we could even afford to lose to Switzerland and still have a decent chance of going through... We are winning the final game. But that that 5 1 humping against Germany has effectively taken a point off us. So as far as I'm concerned, we're almost on minus one point now. If we get scud it, right? If we get scud it by Switzerland. Oh, like, it's fucking over. No, no, if we no, I'm saying if we no, do we need to I, win. no no, it's over for Clark. It's fucking done. No, if we lose one 0 against Hungary, we can't qualify. Because we, you mean? I because we're not gonna beat Hung we're not gonna win the majority of that goal difference back against Hungary. The, the most we're beating our teams by, like, two goals. Yeah. But anyway, and uh, in case we talk shite here, which we probably already did for, like, 15 minutes, that's where we're going to end it. England won. Is what it is. Talking shite, I think, sums this game up because oh, it, wasn't, it wasn't very good. It was shite. Thoughts on it, though? Will England go through? Will they top this group? I think they will. Denmark drawing earlier. Um, yeah, nah, for me, England are poor, but I think they'll be... I think they'll just win. It's this. a very flat group. I don't I, know. I can see England getting nine points, but in the, the most unconvincing way possible. Three one nil wins yeah, or something. Yeah, I, I can see three stinkers for England. Yeah. Maybe seven points, maybe they'll draw with Denmark, who knows? I have to wait and see, guys. Anyway, Turks, uh, peace.